Hello everyone, and welcome to my review of the Nergigante Gamma Armor Set. This is the new armor set that we got from fighting Arch-Tempered Nergigante. If you're having trouble defeating Arch-Tempered Nergigante, I've made the easiest solo guide for fighting him, and I'll be leaving a link to that in the comment section, or you can click up here to watch it. Now let's get started with the review. As usual, we'll examine the defense and elemental resistance to start us out. When augmented and upgraded, each individual piece of armor comes with 92 defense, which is standard for Rarity 8 armor. For elemental resistance, you'll notice is weak to both Thunder and Dragon. The two Dragon matchups this is going to affect is going to be Tempered Devil Joe and Arch Tempered Zenajiva. The two Thunder matchups would be Arch Tempered Kirin and the Behemoth and Extreme Behemoth, who likes to spam a move called Thunderbolt. The Nergigante armor set then only receives a positive one defense against fire, which, you know, honestly, it really isn't that good. So for the defense and elemental resistance rating, I'm placing the Nergigante armor set into C tier since it's going to be disadvantaged against thunder and dragon fights, and then in fire fights, you're still going to have to eat for the elemental resist large buff at the canteen, and that's kind of a disadvantage as well. Next, we move on to grading the set bonus skill, Hasten Recovery. Hasten Recovery is kind of like a weaker version of a health regen augmentation. Uh, as you attack the monster, you get your health back, but not immediately. You have to get five attacks in a row off, and there's kind of an internal cooldown timer that stops this from happening too quickly. So each weapon also gets a set amount of health that it's going to receive. Weapons with a slow attack rate get the best recovery from Hasten Recovery. So this means weapons like hammers, hunting horns, greatsword, and even the gun lance does pretty well. Weapons with a fast attack speed benefit the least from haste and recovery. That's because, again, it counts how many attacks you've made before it activates, and it actually has a cooldown timer where some of your attacks won't be counted if they've been made too quickly. Not to mention, fast weapons receive the least healing when it does activate. Besides being worse than a health regen augmentation, haste and recovery has a bigger problem. It requires three pieces of Nergigante armor in order to be added to your build, which places it in direct competition with the two meta set bonus skills, Master's Touch and Spare Shot. So the reality is that you're never going to be building three pieces of Nergigante armor on your set because Hasten Recovery is nowhere close to competing with the usefulness of Master's Touch or Spare Shot. If you took Hasten Recovery over one of those two, your build would A, lose a lot of damage, and B, only gain a small amount of healing. So I'm placing Hasten Recovery into the C tier for being too expensive and not healing enough. All right, now we can start judging the individual pieces of armor. This is really where the Nergigante set starts to do much better because it does shift the meta forward for some mixed sets. Starting with the helmet, it comes with one level of Stamina Surge, one level of Agitator, and two medium decoration slots. That's a total of four medium decoration slots, which is pretty good efficiency for the helmet slot, though we've seen it before on another helmet, the Emperor's Crown Beta. The main problem I have is whether Stamina Surge and Agitator are going to be more important than two levels of, let's say, Critical Eye on the Kaiser Crown Gamma. These are both helmets I would consider for a bow build, but if you're really having trouble fitting everything you need into the bow build, then Critical Eye is going to end up taking priority over something like Stamina Surge and Agitator, and it's usually the case on a bow build that you don't even have room for health boost, so after a more careful look at the helmet, uh, rather than when I first saw it when it first came out, I'm going to be placing it into the A tier for being good, but probably not optimal for most bow builds. I'll be really curious to see what people come up with in the following months. Dual Blades would be the other weapon interested in building Stamina Surge, but I highly doubt this is going to be chosen over the Draken Helmet or the Teostra Gamma Helmet in that case. At best, it'll probably be used to replace the Draken Helmet for Dual Blades, as long as the Dual Blades will still get Master's Touch. So Dual Blades, unlike bows, really does need Master's Touch as a huge damage boost. So whatever the build ends up being, it won't sacrifice that skill. Then we have the Nergigante Male Gamma. It comes with one level of maximum might, a medium decoration slot, and a large decoration slot. When we compare to the Draken Mail, you can see not only can it fit a medium decoration where the Draken Coil wouldn't be able to, but you're also not forced to take two levels of Critical Eye, which sometimes you really don't need those. For example, on the Teostra Gamma set, when we want to build Master's Touch in the past, we didn't really have a better chest option than the Draken Mail, and Draken Mail forced us to take the Teostra Alpha Arms because 
If we took the Gamma Arms, we'd end up with too many levels of Critical Eye. Now that we can use the Nergigante Male Gamma instead, we're able to actually bring the Teos to Gamma Arms. So here's what a new Hammer build could look like because of this improvement. Notice that instead of Attack Boost 7, I could instead take Peak Performance 3, Airborne, and still have two slots left over for Vitality, so really this has been an upgrade to Teostra make set builds, particularly ones that want to use Static Affinity like Crit Eye and Maximum Might. I should also point out that it can easily pair with the Spare Shot mixed set as well, so that would be for bow guns. Because of this, the Nergigante male is going right into S tier, it's not mind-blowingly OP, but it does make us stronger in some cases. Now we'll look at the Nergigante Vambrace's Gamma. You'll notice it comes with a built-in level of part breaker, which is an immediate no-no. It's actually very easy to build part breaker without being forced to bring it on a pair of arms. So it's just really unfortunate that Capcom made this decision. It looks like it has the efficiency of the Draken armor, so I mean technically it does. However, part breaker is really it's not needed in most fights, so it's not as efficient as the Draken arms, except for maybe Kulv Taroth if you don't need Master's Touch. Uh, and that's another problem for the Nergigante arms, is that the arm slot isn't really negotiable when you're building for Spare Shot or Master's Touch. So we're going to place these arms right into B tier for being okay, but it's definitely not going to be useful for any end game builds. After the Van Braces, we have the Nergigante Gamma Coil, which is going to be similarly efficient to the Kulv Taroth Beta Coil, except this one is going to be forcing you to build Maximum Might and Agitator. So once again, weapons that don't use Maximum Might kind of miss out here, just like they did with the Nergigante Gamma Chess Piece. Regardless of that, what's nice about the Nergigante Coil is that it adds enough efficiency that certain weapons are able to take Agitator up to level 4 or level 5, and you're probably wondering, why would I want to bring Agitator up? Well, it's because your alternative damage option is peak performance, right? So we're done with Crit Boost, we're done with 100% Affinity, we're done with White Sharpness, we're done getting Master's Touch, and we have room for a little bit more. What do we normally take? Well, your option is Peak Performance or Agitator, but most of the time we go Peak Performance because Peak Performance is your most efficient option. Well, this coil now makes it more efficient to actually go ahead and reach for Agitator. It just makes it slightly more efficient to be able to go that direction. With Peak Performance, it really doesn't work on every monster, especially the ones that deal tick damage, right? Teostra, Lunastra, uh, definitely... Uh, the Ancient Leshen is another good one, right, and Val Hazak as well. So you have these monsters that deal tick damage, you're not going to be able to really use peak performance efficiently on them. What do you do? You reach for Agitator. So this new Nergigante coil is now meta for building Agitator on a Dragon set build or a Teostra set build, but really only for weapons that use maximum might. And it's not a good choice for spare shot builds because you'd have to give up the Zenajiva uh, coil, which is really efficient for Bogan builds. Uh, because of its ability to push forward the meta in the coil slot, let's go ahead and place this coil into the S tier and we'll move on. Finally, we have the Nergigante legs, which look really good because they do provide three levels of attack boost, but for most builds, they're not that useful. They don't fit into the Draken armor, Teostra armor, or Zenajiva armor mixed sets, and that's mainly because, again, you're trying to build Master's Touch or Spare Shot, well, the legs on all those sets are really good. I'm also under the opinion that attack boost is kind of overrated. Yes, it does give you more damage, but at what cost? At the cost of your small decoration slots, that could have been used for really useful defensive skills like Health Boost 3, Tool Specialist 3, Divine Blessing, and Fire Resist. So you're, you're giving up a lot of defense for a small amount of extra damage. And really, that's only useful to someone who's trying to get a new speed run time. So for the vast majority of players, not that important. Now, there are probably going to be some really niche cases where these legs should be used to max out attack boost on a few damage builds, but we'll have to wait and see if that really happens to see if it really plays out. For example, you do have bow builds, and bow builds don't use Master's Touch, and they don't use Spare Shot. Or maybe even the Witcher's Silver Sword, so that particular weapon has so much built-in white sharpness that you could potentially skip worrying about Master's Touch. Similarly, there are some weapons with no white sharpness, just a large blue sharpness bar, and finally, we do have the Lunastra Sticks weapons as well. So these legs would naturally, maybe they'd be a top choice for bringing up the damage output on those weapons. I'll go ahead and place the Nergigante Gamma legs into S- tier for being able to build attack boost the most efficiently on builds that aren't concerned with building Master's Touch 
or Spare Shot. Those are going to be rare builds, but I'm sure they do exist, and we'll see them when they pop up. Alright, and now to tally up the scores for the Nergigante Gamma Armor Set. For defense, we gave the set a C. For the set bonus skill, also a C. The helmet received an A tier rating. The chest piece received an S tier rating. The arms received a B tier rating. The coil got an S tier rating. And the legs received an S minus tier rating. That brings the total score up to a B plus. Unfortunately, for the Nergigante Gamma set, not all of its parts were a home run, and the parts that were good are really only going to show up on Maximum Might sets, which kind of disappoints me, because I thought Capcom could have focused more on making skills like Resentment and Agitator a better option for building for. Maximum Might locks certain weapons out from ever using this set. On top of that, when we're taking a look at this set as a whole, Hasten Recovery really just isn't that valuable, and its elemental resistances were not particularly defensive against certain endgame monsters. So we end up with a set where you'll probably only ever be using one piece of the set at a time in a mix set, and most of your mileage will come from the chest and the coil. And that wraps up my review of the Nergigante Gamma Armor Set. Let me know if you agreed with the rankings or not. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.